Welcome back to our course on transformational leadership, strategy and governance. In this, our penultimate module, we're going to be looking at some of the leading edge thinking and practices, the frontiers of the future. Some of the things that don't fit our current ways of thinking. If we're in the kind of change moment that we're in, as I've been describing, and saying that we can't see the future from where we are now, and that the new ways that start to emerge look radically different from the ways we're used to, then it would be good for us to start to explore some of what that might look like. So as we go through this module, some of these things might not sound so familiar to you. I'd suggest we just remain open, see what seems to resonate, see what seems to make sense, explore some of the related materials. If it doesn't seem relevant to you, then you can just leave it aside. The important thing is to know that these kind of developments are happening at this time, supported by some of the latest science, as well as some of the latest organizational practices. I started getting into some of this work, more the energetic-based work in organizations, after many years working with multi-stakeholder uh, situations where you have multiple organizations trying to crack complex problems, and realizing that the complexity was so great of the challenges that it was very hard to engage them at a purely traditional means. And this fits everything we've been saying, you know, with Einstein's quote from you can't solve a problem from the same level of thinking that created it. So I started to explore what were some of the things that were really out of the box, that really didn't fit our current ways of understanding reality, but were showing effect, that had been researched, that had been tried out in some way, but were really demonstrably making a difference. And that's how I got into this whole realm of what I will call broadly energetics. Now, many of us may be familiar with the idea that an individual has an energy body or an energetic dimension to our being. We saw that in one of the earlier modules with that image of the different layers of the aura around people. And many people for thousands of years have been working with that energetic dimension and more recently practices such as Reiki and other things have become very popular as people have seen that working at the energetic level with an individual can make a difference far more quickly than other methods. Well, it's not only at the individual level that you have an energetic reality. In fact, at all levels. In fact, anything that has an identity, anything that has a boundary and a name has an energetic dimension. Remember that we were talking about how it's not something that's separate from the physical that we can see. And indeed that there are people out there who can actually see the energetic dimension. It's just a more subtle part of our reality. It's like a spectrum of light. We can only see part of that light spectrum, but we know that there's many other uh, elements on that light spectrum that we can't see with our physical eyes, but they do exist because they can be measured. So if we take organization or community, a collective of people as our context, as that's what we're focusing on, what does this energetic reality look like from that perspective? The way I've made sense of it for myself and then as I've been trying to talk to others is thinking about these three levels of architecture. So we have a material architecture and that's simply the world we can see. You know, the, the concrete products that we make, the results, uh, things that we can measure, everything that's pretty visible in this 3D realm. But that we find is held in another level of architecture that I call relational. And a lot of the approaches we've talked about here are about creating healthier relationships between people. You remember all the work on culture, the tools for collaboration like Open Space, World Cafe and Circle. Those increase the coherence in the relationships between people. And what we find in organizations is when we increase the coherence of the relational field, of the relationships, of the culture, things which are also less tangible than hard business results, when we start to make those work well, then the material architecture also increases and becomes more coherent. So work, having a healthy field of relationships in our organization has a direct effect on increasing our results and our effectivity in the world. Now, we then add a third layer onto that, which I've called the energetic architecture. So imagine that the material architecture held in the relational, which is also less visible and less measurable than the concrete things, all held in an energetic architecture. 
So a field in the sciences they would talk about, a field of information that uh, contains the relationships between the people and contains the material. You can imagine in a way it's like things come out of a more subtle energetic reality into our relationships, into the material. Just very concretely, you know, you have an idea. That idea exists in your mind. You can't measure it. You can't see it. It's not visible in the material realm. You might say that exists in this more energetic realm. There's the idea. And then you start to talk to people about the idea. Well, that brings it into the relational realm. It makes it more real because it's there between us. But it's still not manifest yet. It's still not something that we can see and measure. But if you talk about it enough with people and enough people get excited about it, then you might start to create something together and actually bring it into this physical reality that we can see. So that's how you can think about it very simply, that they're just different levels of concreteness. And they get less concrete as you move out into the more energetic dimensions or the more subtle dimensions. But they're just as important because if you imagine things coming in from those dimensions, it's what's created in the energetic, in the invisible uh, realities that eventually manifests in the visible world. So then when you think about it from that perspective, it becomes particularly important to start paying attention to those realms and to try to understand them. You know, our scientists admit that they can only really understand 4% of our reality. There's 90%, 96% of the universe they can't explain. They just call it dark matter and dark energy because it's invisible to our knowing. So as we're moving into these complex times and, and a new era, one of the ways we can look for more creative solutions that might help us be more effective in the transition is to start to explore some of that 96% that's unknown. And there's been enough experimentation over the last 50 years or so to really demonstrate that there is something out there beyond what we can actually see. And that example of the idea coming into a discussion, coming into form, is just a very simple way of thinking about that. So if we accept and just take the language for the moment, play with this idea of these three architectures, the material, the relational, and the energetic. One of the approaches that I'm going to share with you and some of the language that's been developed is really looking at how we start to integrate those. So imagine you've got lots of nice ideas or positive uh, possibilities in this, re in this energetic realm. How do you start to bring those into the material realm? How do you start to integrate the potential that exists in the energetic realm with our hands-on material reality? So these triangles, interpenetrating triangles, are one way of depicting that. On the left, you've got the, the triangle named healing. And the two triangles are pulled apart here, where our basic concept on the, in the blue triangle at the top is not yet fully integrated into the material reality. So the more energetic or subtle dimensions is slightly separate from. And in that energetic reality lies our potential. So in the realm of quantum physics, they will talk about these fields or quantum reality as being full of potential and possibility, not yet con concretized into reality, but full of ultimately uh, unlimited potential and possibility. So if we can start to bring some of that potential into our, our real 3D world, then we're likely to be able to generate solutions to the complexity that we're facing that we never could have thought of before. So there's this process of what they call then healing, which is an interesting word because it generally means in its root to make whole. So healing and whole, for example, in the Dutch language, heal means whole and halen is the word to heal. So healing literally means to break, to make whole, to integrate these dimensions. That we move from healing into whole, where that energetic dimension of possibility is really integrated into our concrete world in our organizations or our communities. And then the next level is once we've built a certain level of coherence there, that the organization is building potential to be able to shift into a to a next level. So through this transformation. And that symbol of the two triangles locked in as a star in many, many religious and spiritual traditions points to transformation and change. 
But what happens at that moment when we've got all of these ideas and new potential emerges is that our vision, as it were, as an organization shifts. So our sense of possibility as an organization and what might be realizable through us as an organization is expanded. And what that immediately means is that we have to shift our reality in the concrete realm. We have to deepen our roots in the same way as if a tree is wanting to put its branches up into the sky, then it's going to have to dig its roots deeper into the ground. Otherwise, it's going to be blown over with the excess volume uh, that is now present in the air. So as we expand our sense of possibility and potential, we also need to get more grounded uh, in reality, build our organizational structures to be able to hold that energy, that new energy of possibility and potential.